All right, welcome to Roll and Release, your weekly little self-care class where we do all kinds of good self-massage work with our balls. Um, as always, whatever you have will work. What I have today are kind of my usual setup. I have my yoga brick to use for propping. I have my alpha ball and I have two sets of the balls in the bag, yoga tune-up balls and massage therapy plus balls. Our theme for today is going to be rolling out all the things, all the tightness that happens when you've been sitting too much. You guys know what I mean, right? So we spend a lot of time sitting, we get kind of that forward head, rounded forward in our shoulders. Sometimes our back just doesn't feel good. So today's theme is um, gonna be great for all those things. All right, let's get started. We're going to start today with our alpha ball. And we're going to be putting the alpha ball, I'm going to show you before I lay down, right here in the, um, I believe it's called like your occipital notch, right? If you were to follow the bottom of your skull around, there's like this little notch right in the center. And that's where we're going to be putting the ball. You can do this without the yoga brick, although I really love it with the yoga brick. Um, everybody's going to, or something like a book or something propped underneath. What we're going to do is we're going to lay back and we're going to put our ball in our little notch there. And again, try it both ways. Try it with the brick. Try it without. Um, with the brick, you'll raise yourself up a little bit. Um, and it feels like a little more pressure, which might be just why I like it on there. Um, just get there. Right? So we're just going to start and you'll notice as you get there and just kind of let yourself sink in all kinds of sensations there. Um, uh, just a general reminder as we're doing all this work, just find kind of that nice natural breath. Sometimes things don't feel the best so we get tight or we don't, we tense up, kind of don't breathe with ease. As you're here, you can always just stay here or you can explore some movement. So it, moving your head like you're saying yes or nodding your head up and down turning your head side to side like you're saying no or any combination of those movements maybe some circles some little I don't know like a diagonal nod you're gonna find different spots as you explore a little bit and we're just going to hang out here for a few minutes and kind of see what we find as we explore. Notice your breath. Just let it be nice and relaxed. And just finding what kind of works for you on there. Lots of little muscle attachments coming in here. That is really going to help release. This is also a good one um, for my people that get headaches, migraines, that kind of thing. This can be super helpful. So a good one to remember as you're playing around a little bit. Well, let's do a few more breaths here. Just playing with movement or holding still whatever you're feeling today as we explore a little bit and of course like if you're like oh i want to pull the ball down a little bit or up a little bit little adjustments like that always fine Sometimes just those little adjustments can make a big difference on like finding a spot, finding where it's pressing in. All right, now that you've played a little bit there, go ahead and take whatever, if you have the ball to break out, just let yourself lay back. Maybe give yourself just a check-in moment to like, 
Turn your head side to side, up and down. Hopefully there's some ease in those movements in your neck. Next up, we're gonna go to a set of the balls in the bag. You may want your yoga brick, you may not. We're actually gonna take the balls out of the bag today for this next little series. I really like, my favorite are the little balls, but this works with either. And if you remember, the bigger the ball, the less intense it is. The smaller, the more it's gonna like really get in there. So if you have a choice and you want to pick one, based on that, definitely do. Um, where we're gonna put the balls are right here. If you do this before we lay down, like reach up and just like give your upper traps a squeeze, right? And get that like meaty part of our muscle up here. We're gonna stick the balls like right in that space, right? Right behind it, basically. So they're gonna be a lot wider. I know we've done this before, or we've done things with the balls in this area where we've kept our balls in the tote and then they're really close to the spine won't be the case this time when you get them in. I'll be right up there in that, I don't know, the part you could squeeze, we'll call it. Um, when you get there, you decide if you want your head back or if you like a little support from like a pillow or a brick or something, you could definitely add that there. We're just going to get there. And I will say anytime the balls aren't in the bag, they won't be perfect. Right? Sometimes you're like, oh, it's a little further to the right or to the left, that's okay. Just go for it and kind of <laughs> shimmy around and play around with it a little bit. As always, when we're doing anything, you can just be in the spot. Sometimes that's enough on any given day. If you're feeling like some arm movement, maybe start with just a nice slow arm circle where you're gonna lift the arms up and then open and circle and bring the arms around. And the range is your range. As we move the arms, it'll change how those balls are pressing into our tissues, which is what we want. So you're just gonna adjust it in your body. You could reverse your circles, palms could reach up to the ceiling as you reach the arms out, up overhead, and then press the arms down beside you. I'm gonna give you suggestions on arms, but as always, there's never a right or wrong. So feel free to play, right? You could go into some like a chest fly, open the arms out to the sides of the room and then bring the arms back. And you could do seaweed arms, maybe my favorite one, right? Cause there's really no rhyme or reason on seats seaweed arms. You could do whatever you want. Um, shift your body a little bit left to right. Shimmy with your feet, just that. Give some, get those balls in there in various places and allow yourself some just freedom to move around. Take your hands behind your head. You could do a very slow upper ab curl. I like to keep my neck pretty straight. Not, a, not Don't overly jam it forward and do the lift from the abdominals. So you don't feel like your neck is straining if you're lifting and playing with that. You can also lift to a spot and see if you can get a little spin going on, feeling the balls kind of spin into your tissues back there, rotating. Basically feels like we're doing a little side bend. We'll just play with that for a little bit. And remember, even when your head is up, you could rock side to side. And then our other option here would be to play with some movements with our pelvis. Start with just a little tuck and arch, not even lifting your hips yet, and just kind of explore what that feels like and how that changes that pressure of the balls. You can do some pelvic circles, tuck, shift your hips to the right, tip your pubic bone away, shift to the left, come back into your tuck and keep circling the hips around in space. This is really good just to get some movement in our low back and abdominal work which if you've been sitting a while will feel fabulous. And then we'll reverse and go the other way. If you're doing some of those pelvic circles. 
And then another option, if it's doable for you, would be a little bit of your bridging. So maybe you want a pelvic tuck and start exploring lifting up. That can be a pretty intense press in. So if that's not there for you today, then just don't go that far. Keep your hips down on the mat. But if it is, you can play with it. And of course, you can explore lifting as far up as kind of feels good in your body. And then rolling down. You can explore lifting up maybe just a little and then shimmying from there. So that's just going to increase that pressure and give you some kind of more options, uh, the, depending on how your balls are kind of sitting in those upper trap tissues. Right, a little roll. And then coming back down. Okay. Let's come off of our balls for a moment. Now I want to maybe just do a little check-in, see how that's feeling. I want us to bring our balls together and see if we can get them in between our shoulder blades. Now, any of this stuff that I'm doing, if it feels way too intense with whatever balls you have at home um, on the floor, these are really nice to do up against the wall as well. I should have mentioned that sooner, huh? Um, that is always the case. Okay, it's a little trickier when the balls are not in the bag to get them in the right spot, I will say. <laughs> which in some ways is the good part because they move around a little bit more. But see if you can just move them around and find them kind of mid, sh mid shoulder blades in between the shoulder blades. We're just gonna hit another spot in here today. Um, if you can find that in between your shoulder blade spot with the ball, see if you can do some puppet arms where you're gonna lift your shoulder blades and reach up for the ceiling and then let your shoulder blades kind of wrap around the balls. Okay, a little, just moving our shoulder blades and definitely they're right in that vicinity of the balls. And now I'm gonna play with just like a lift one shoulder blade, lift the other shoulder blade, just kind of moving my shoulder blades around in various places. Maybe a little open close of the arms, right? Circles, seaweed arms, anything you like in this position. Really just getting into those muscles that sit right on the inside of those shoulder blades. Feel free to shimmy back and forth. Play around with that. Lift your hips or pelvic rocks. We're really just getting into those upper back muscles that tend to get tight when we sit a lot and we're rounded forward for long periods of time. And remember, if you need something under your head for these, you could be supported and have like a pillow or your yoga brick underneath your head. Explore some shifting side to side, up and down. And some big breath. Just exploring a little bit in those upper back muscles, somewhere in between those shoulder blades. All right, you get to come off of there. Go ahead and take the balls and just set them to the side for a second. Let yourself lay back down and just see how it feels now that we have the balls out of there. Maybe even want to test an arm circle or some arm movements. Now that you have those out, hopefully those feel really good. Um, next up, we're going to turn over to our bellies and we're going to take our alpha ball with us. And we're going to get into kind of our, our front of our chest and shoulders. So you could do this on either side. The placement of the ball as we start, I know I always call it like the crevice between your shoulder and your chest, right, right in, right in that front of the shoulder space, you have, right in that a little bit. Um, we're going to lay down and just try to get that ball in that space. I'm going to move some stuff out of my way so you can see. And kind of usual, I would say get there and just be there for a moment. See if you can find what feels like good pressure. Play with where your arm starts. Back. So let's all put it beside us. Let's put that arm beside us with your palm up to the ceiling and just let your shoulder drape forward, taking a few breaths on there. 
And then as you're comfortable, you can start playing with some movement. So things like just lifting that arm up and back down is gonna put a little more pressure into it. Lift, maybe you wanna bring it out to the side. Sometimes I'll just take my hand and kind of pet the floor out here, right? In any, any way to change that pressure. You can also play with kind of rolling in and out of the ball or in and out of the ball, rolling, leaning into it, I guess. Shimming, shifting. And as always, there's not like an exact right spot. So if it feels like you want to move the ball outward or up or in a little bit, definitely do that. We are going to kind of work that ball across, across us here in a second. But play with the arm a little bit. Try different movements. See what works for you. Try that like shimmy a little bit, shift a little bit. And, and then we're also going to take the ball and I want you to move it in. I'll show you guys this. I really want, if you know where your collarbone is, right, that bone that just goes across here. Like if you can find like right underneath that. And we're just going to play with kind of being there and pressing into that space right below your collarbone. You don't usually have to do a whole lot here. You can. You can shimmy. You can move this arm around. I find I don't have to do a whole lot. The pressure kind of feels like a good pressure. And just taking some breath. You could have your head up or down. You could prop your head on a pillow okay. and just be in that space underneath your collarbone. And of course, there's kind of a lot of space there. So you'll have room to inch it in towards your center, towards your sternum a little bit more. And try like a few spots in there. And just see what it feels like. And you may feel like you can't press all the way into it. You may feel like you have to keep yourself a little lifted and ease into that pressure. That's good. It's doable. You can kind of roll the ball across crossed that space like right underneath your collarbone. See how that feels. We'll spend just a little bit more time here on this side. Feel free to move that arm around in space. And then as you're ready to be done with it, go ahead and just come down to the mat, maybe even just lay there a minute and like do a little check in between the shoulders and move your shoulder blades around. See if you notice that difference across your shoulder and chest. And then of course we'll switch to the other side of the switch this way, just in case. So we'll kind of explore all the things. We'll start a little further out in that space in between your shoulder and your chest. I'll start exploring some rolling there. I'm using that alpha ball. If you don't have an alpha ball, the other balls will work for this. Because they're not as high, um, you may decide you wanna put, like if you have a small ball, you wanna put it on a, on a yoga brick, that kind of works. You can also take this one to the wall. It's a nice one to do on the wall. It will kind of allow you to play with the pressure a little bit more. Remember on this one, you can start with that arm beside you, maybe do some lift and lowers, start exploring, moving the arm out to the side of you. You can do my pet the mat, pet the floor, right? just kind of running your hand in different places and seeing what you feel. You can explore more pressure by kind of shifting your body weight in and even kind of I don't know, rolling your shoulder a little bit, shoulder blade, comfortable head and neck. So for instance, if you wanted a little extra something in your head, maybe you put your yoga brick or a pillow or something under there. Just playing and doing what works best for you. And then just like we did on that other side, we're gonna take it in 
and kind of catch this inside of our, underneath our, sh our collarbone space, we'll call it. And just play with, maybe you're just there. Maybe you're doing some movement while you're there. That can be kind of a tender space. Sometimes it's super interesting to feel those differences even between one side or the other. One side is a little more tender than the other. So either just laying there, adding some movement, that arm. And remember, if this feels like too much, you can always take it to the wall. And just lean into the wall and put your ball out there in front. We'll do just a few more breaths on there. And then just like we did before, go ahead and like let yourself take your ball out and just lay there and notice how those shoulders feel, how that front of the shoulder chest space feels. It often gets tight when you've been sitting a long time. Since we're right here, we're gonna do our psoas rule as well. So our deep hip flexor. This is the one where you're gonna put the ball right on the inside of your hip crest. You can kind of find that on yourself. Um, and then it feels like the ball goes right on the inside of it and you lay on it. This one will feel kind of deep, right? So head can start down, but you can prop yourself up as you go. And of course you could use a little hello or whatever you like in there. Um, we'll start just being there and you'll just kind of progress it at your, what feels good to you. So we can move the leg around. We can do things like bend the leg and kind of do a little windshield wiper action or maybe some circles. Let the hips rock a little bit. That'll kind of change your pressure. I mean, if I rock away from the ball, it kind of lessens the pressure. If I rock into it, it's going to feel a little bit more pressure. So you're just going to find what feels good to you. You can curl your toe under and lift your knee up off the mat. That's going to put more pressure on your ball. And of course, any combination of these, and you can kind of rock or lean side to side, shimmy your hips a little bit, or any combination of those things as we're there. Remember that nice deep breath as things get not as comfortable. Doing a little shimmying around. You can do kind of a bend your leg and lift your thigh, which will feel like a little glute and hamstring work. And then we'll also really get that ball sinking into that hip flexor there. We'll do just a few more breaths on there. And then as you're done, take that out. Give yourself a little moment just to like lay flat, wiggle your hips around, see if you notice a difference between that hip space where we just took that ball out and the other side. And then of course we gotta do the other side. So same thing, you're gonna stick that ball in right on that inside crest of your hip bone. And then as you get there, just maybe start and just let yourself be there. Um, no, I didn't do it on the other side, but you can prop up. The more you prop up, the more pressure you're going to get. So any version of that, you can curl your toe under, lift your knee. You could have your leg bent, explore some side to side or some circles. Remember, not a right or wrong. We're just going for that kind of sensation of like, oh yeah, that's some needed pressure in a good way. Their only wrong is if something is not feeling good, then you'll just not do that. Adjust, find something that does feel good. Or we can shift on this one. We can kind of roll toward the ball in a way, shimmies with the body. 
just want that ball to get to sink into those tissues and hang out for a little bit. Maybe noticing as we do some of this sided work, when you notice one side a lot tighter than the other, always interesting. Not unusual, of course, it's usually the, the common thing, but interesting to kind of figure out what your what your sides are. Let's do just a few more breaths in this space. And then as you're ready, take that ball out and then just let yourself lay there. Wiggle your hips around. Hopefully that front of the hip space just all feels a lot looser. All right, we're gonna flip over onto our back next. And we still have our alpha ball. We're gonna use it to do our sacrum scrub. So on this one, you'll be setting the ball right on that bony plate of your hips, mid, we'll call it mid plate. And then either just being there or slowly moving your hips. I like to start with side to side to kind of drag the ball across, scrub the sacrum. Okay. As you guys probably already know, this is one of my favorites from if your low back is feeling tight, if your back in general. And, and usually if we've been sitting for a long period of time, we've kind of been hanging out in our low back, everything seems to get tight. So this one is going to just take us as we roll across that bony surface, we're rolling across all of that fascia and connective tissue that crosses over in that area. And remember, you can go side to side, you could do some circles, you could do some tuck and arch while you're there. It's really what you're comfortable with on there. And you can also explore, I call it the edges of the sacrum. So getting into our glutes. So feel free if, if getting out to those edges where you start to get into the muscle, into those glute muscles feels good, then definitely explore there. I'm just gonna give ourselves a few minutes on here to, to explore. Little rock, front to back, circles. Just those shifts sometimes, those leans into the ball a little bit more, a little less. And remember that breath as we're here. We just want kind of that easy, calm breath, right? Ideally our rolling time is relaxing our body. And our breath can definitely help with that. And do just a few more little movements or a few more breaths in that position. And then as you're ready, go ahead and lift hips. Take your ball out, come all the way back down. Give yourself just a moment to see how the back feels. After doing that, maybe you wanna wiggle or move it around a little bit. And then let's come up, let's come up to all fours and just do like a little egg and class, like check in. Um, on all fours, we're just gonna play with our cat movement on there. Just let's drape our head down, round our back, push the floor away. Notice how your neck and your shoulders and your upper back feel. And then just go into that arch where you're looking up, sticking your tail up behind you, really squeezing your shoulder blades together. And just like two more kind of super slow. Let the head hang. Lift the head, reach the hips behind you, hug shoulder blades together. One more time, maybe that biggest breath on this one. Long, big inhale. And then that exhale. 
little arch. And then just as you finish, don't maybe come up on those knees. Just roll yourself up. Get those shoulders a little out. And hopefully we're feeling all, all relaxed, released, open through our chest and shoulders after all of that work. Thank you guys so much for joining me this week.